In this video, we'll describe the features of an efficient exchange surface with reference to the fusion of oxygen and carbon dioxide across an alveolus. Okay, so the human body has a pair of lungs which are exchange surfaces to allow um, diffusion of oxygen into our bloodstream and diffusion of uh, carbon dioxide out of our bloodstream. And we inhale and exhale through our nose and mouth and the air that we inhale goes into our throat and down a tube called the trachea. So the trachea is the starting point, or what we call the windpipe, and it is covered in these C rings, rings that look like C shapes, and that's made of cartilage, which you'll learn about later. If you feel your trachea, if you push your hand in quite gently to your throat, you will feel those bumps along your trachea quite easily, and they keep the airways open amongst other things. Now, the trachea actually branches off to two bronchi. Um, so I'll draw those in two. So it branches off into bronchi, like this. And there are two bronchi, and there are two lungs, so you can guess where each bronchi goes. Each bronchi tends to go into a separate lung. So what I'll do is I'll draw the lung on each side, this is a very simplified drawing of the lung. The lung's actually a very different shape to this. Um, but I'm just showing you the idea. And then the bronchi branch off even further into what we call bronchioles. Now bronchioles are these tiny branched tubes that reach far and wide deep into the lungs. Um, and you can imagine this is, a, this is to allow the full surface of the lung, or the full area of the lung, to have an exchange surface. Um, and I think that's enough. And we could carry on the other side, but you get the idea. So we'll focus on this side of the lung. And if I zoom in, and by the way, these structures are called bronchioles. So bronchioles are the smaller tubes. So if I zoom into these bronchioles, um, and by the way, it has to be using a microscope. So if I used a microscope to zoom in to those bronchioles, I would see, and this is an exaggeration, I'm drawing them much larger than they actually are, I would see these structures called alveoli, and they look a bit like spheres, and there are literally millions of them, and each alveoli is about between 100 and 300 na uh, micrometers, sorry, in diameter. So they do need a microscope to be seen. Um, so these are called alveoli. Now a single alveolus, um, or one sphere, is wrapped up with blood vessels. And we'll draw um, the vessels in, in red. Although in textbooks you'll see some blood vessels in blue and some in red. Remember that blue blood in our body does not exist, but we draw some arteries or some capillaries as blue to indicate in the book that they are carrying deoxygenated blood, blood that has already been um, used by the body and the oxygen has been removed and it comes back to the lungs again to gain more oxygen. So these capillaries or blood vessels surround the alveoli and I'll draw a few there. There's an entry point and an exit point for the blood. And now I'll zoom in slightly further and we'll focus on an individual oops, we'll do that again. An individual alveolus. Now I should say that due to the fact that there are so many alveoli in the lungs, the lungs seem quite small organs. But if you opened up the lungs completely and spread them across as far as they'd go, they actually have a surface area of about 70 metres squared. And that's the size of about half a tennis court. So actually the lungs are impressively sized in terms of surface area. Um, and this allows them to be efficient at exchanging gases. And we'll look at now the reasons why alveoli assist the lungs in exchanging gases. So the first thing is, as we've said, a large surface area. So a large surface area and this is because 
rather than have one big lung with a certain surface area, it's broken down into lots and lots or millions and millions of tiny alveoli. And because we said earlier that the smaller an individual cell is, for example, the greater the surface area to volume ratio, breaking these down into small spheres massively increases the exchange surface area. And that provides more space for the molecules to pass through. Now another obvious one is that the alveoli um, on the inside, and that's where the oxygen comes into first of all, the, the alveoli on the inside actually has a barrier that is permeable to oxygen and carbon dioxide. So barrier permeable to I'll write CO, and unfortunately I can't do subscript, so I'll just write a 2 there. But remember it is subscript, and O2. And permeable, or permeates, means pass through. So it allows co uh, carbon dioxide and oxygen to pass through. And that applies to the inside, or the, the, the outer wall of the alveoli, as well as the walls of the capillary. And this relates to our next point, and that is that the barrier um, is thin to reduce the diffusion distance. So thin barrier to reduce diffusion I think I spelled that really badly uh, distance and I'll make that slightly bigger and the reason why there's a thin barrier is because the alveoli is only one cell thick so if I draw a cell there, and a cell there, a cell there, and a cell there going round the alveoli, the, the whole entire wall is one cell thick. And that allows a very thin barrier to allow oxygen and carbon dioxide to pass through seamlessly. And likewise, if I zoomed in even further slightly, um, and I drew the entire structure of the capillary, the capillary is only one cell thick too. And therefore that provides another thin barrier to allow the oxygen and the carbon dioxide to go through the first barrier, which is the alveoli, and into the second barrier, which is the bloodstream. So, what's interesting is that each of those cells are also specialized cells. They're called squamous cells. Squamous means squashed and very thin. They're, um, they're flattened, and that allows an even thinner diffusion barrier, and if you imagine it, taking a cell that's that shaped, completely spherical, or taking a squashed cell like that, the squashed cell, or the flattened cell, has a much thinner barrier. Now it's appropriate to say the alveoli and the capillaries have um, thin walls that are one cell thick, but you do not say they have thin cell walls. Remember plants have cell walls, bacteria can have cell walls, fungi can have cell walls, but human cells never have cell walls. And therefore, saying they have thin cell walls is actually lying. So it's not thin cell walls, it's thin walls that are one cell thick. So be very careful with your language there. Now, of course, the capillaries are very close. Oops, that ruined that. Uh, the capillaries are very close to the wall of the alveoli or the alveolus here, because alveolus means one, and therefore that proximity allows diffusion to happen more quickly. Um, and as there's only two barriers, there's one cell in the alveolus and one cell thick in the capillary, the total uh, diffusion distance is only one micrometer in thickness, which is obviously very small and therefore oxygen and carbon dioxide can permeate easily. Um, and the last point is the maintenance of a diffusion gradient. So we'll talk about that in the next slide. So this is a nice, a nice diagram from the book, much better than my diagram, and it shows you the um, individual alveolus, and this is kind of an internal structure, and it shows you that this alveolus is connected to a tube there, and inhaled air comes through the tube, it fills the cavity of the alveolus, and then it can diffuse through, well not the whole air, but the oxygen can diffuse through the one cell thick barrier of the wall of the alveolus. 
through the one cell thick barrier of the wall of the capillary um, and enter the uh, capillary tube and therefore bind to the red blood cells in the capillary and be carried by the capillary in the bloodstream. And likewise, carbon dioxide come out of the capillary through the capillary cell, um, through the cell in the wall of the alveolus, into the cavity of the alveolus, and then it can be exhaled out of the body. You see there, there's a thin diffusion barrier, allowing diffusion to happen more um, easily. It's surrounded by capillaries, and this is the most important part of this slide, because um, as we said earlier, if for example, okay, so these um, green circles here will represent oxygen, and these purple circles will represent carbon dioxide. Now, obviously, quite clearly, they're not the same size. They're hugely bigger than they should be, but they should be a representation. So, let's say you inhale some air. So you inhale air, and different gases such as nitrogen, argon, carbon dioxide, oxygen, enter the cavity of the alveolus. But what really matters is to humans just the carbon dioxide and the oxygen. Now we should point out that in this um, capillary over here, there's a low concentration of oxygen because the body's depleted the oxygen inside the bloodstream and therefore the blood comes back to the lungs to gain more oxygen. But there's actually a higher concentration of carbon dioxide already there. So we'll put some purple circles in the capillary. So there's a high concentration of carbon dioxide here, a low concentration of carbon dioxide there. So by diffusion, um, it's more likely that carbon dioxide will move from the area of higher concentration through those two um, cells the um, the wall of the capillary and the alveolus and they will enter um, the area of low carbon dioxide concentration which is the cavity of the alveolus so carbon dioxide will tend to diffuse through into the cavity of the alveolus from a high concentration to a low concentration now over here with the oxygen the inverse is true there's a high concentration of oxygen outside the capillary inside the cavity of the alveolus and a low concentration of oxygen inside the capillary. So oxygen tends to move into the bloodstream and it's carried away um, to the body. Now that's during inhalation and then exhalation the um, alveolus constricts um, and obviously so do the lungs and the air left inside the alveolus is forced out. Now, you will find in real life there will be a bit of oxygen left over because it won't completely dissolve, diffuse through straight away. But the majority of it would be carbon dioxide. So it would be increasing carbon dioxide pushed out of the lungs. Um, and then, of course, that oxygen molecule is carried away by the bloodstream to the body. Um, and then we take another breath in. So again, another breath. Um, I'll move that there. And another breath means that more oxygen and more carbon dioxide enters the alveoli. And um, likewise now, during, during respiration in the body, the amount of carbon dioxide inside the capillary has increased um, as you produce carbon dioxide by respiration every second. Um, and again, there is a high concentration of oxygen inside the alveoli and low concentration inside the capillary. So the oxygen tends to move down the concentration gradient. And there is a higher concentration of carbon dioxide and a lower concentration of carbon dioxide inside the alveoli. So the carbon dioxide tends to go towards the alveoli. And again, um, the, well, the oxygen is um, carried to the body by the bloodstream. And then we exhale and we get rid of the carbon dioxide waste product. And you see there that the concentration gradient is really important, so maintaining a high concentration of oxygen inside the alveoli and a low concentration of oxygen past the diffusion barrier um, 
in the bloodstream is important and that, that increase in, in blood flow allows oxygen to be carried away maintaining a low concentration of oxygen where you need it which is the bloodstream. If we didn't have that bloodstream, if the oxygen accumulated like so, so imagine this, I'll just reset these particles, um, but if you imagine that we inhale some oxygen and we inhale some carbon dioxide, um, but of course there's carbon dioxide in the blood as well so um, it's a high concentration. If we absorb or diffuse the oxygen into the bloodstream and then we breathe out. Now the next time we breathe in we'll take in some more oxygen and some more carbon dioxide and because there is an equal balance of oxygen in the capillary and in the alveolus there's no concentration gradient so the oxygen will not diffuse rapidly through into the bloodstream and therefore eventually um, diffusion will stop happening and there'll be no more oxygen um, in the bloodstream and because you're not moving it to your organs that you need it, so your, your brain and your heart and so on are not getting the, the oxygen then your body will start to starve of oxygen so that blood supply is important to maintain the concentration gradient so that wasn't comprehensive, that was only a, um, a few examples, well actually it was most of the examples you need to know but if you want to know more please refer to the um, OCR biology book from um, OCR and page 46 and 47 goes into slightly more detail about things like surfactants. But generally, we should be able to describe the features of an efficient exchange surface with reference to diffusion of oxygen and carbon dioxide across an alveolus.